Um, I'm actually going to start today with a story, and then I'll get into a little bit of the context of the problem that we're trying to solve and how we're going about doing that. So the story I'm going to tell is about Joe. And Joe is a Coloradan. He is an older gentleman that's been in the oil and gas industry for quite a few years. And as many of you may know, that industry is changing pretty rapidly in the state of Colorado. And Joe found himself without a job, and he knew that he had really strong skills, but he wasn't quite sure how to apply those skills to a new job. And he did know that he wanted to go into sales, but that was about all he knew. And as he was um, out looking for jobs, trolling the internet, he actually found Skillful. So he found us and found the resources and information to be incredibly valuable to him. He started leveraging it. And then one of the things we also do is provide career coaching. He knew he needed just one more step to really help him um, get to that next step. So he signed up for a career coach. And that career coach was able to help him translate the skills that he already has into the skills that he needed for a new job in sales. Um, put that into a resume, as well as really hone his interviewing skills and polish them. Remarkably, within just a couple of weeks, uh, Joe found a new job for a Windows manufacturing company, and he's off on his new career, and he really attributes the success that he's had to the tools that he found on Skillful, as well as the career coaching that he was able to get. So that's the story of Joe. and. Um, the problem that Markle, and the Skill Markle Foundation and Skillful is trying to solve is the fact that the labor market is really failing to express supply and demand of skills in a way that um, job seekers can, or really Americans in general, can find meaningful career pathways, and as well as acquiring the new skills that they would need in order to get to a more successful career. You know, the result of that is that job seekers can't find meaningful work. Um, employers are unable to find the talent that they need. And the educators are also having a challenge of really adapting um, to the demands of the marketplace and being able to better support both the employers and the job seekers. So how are we going about this? We are actually trying to couple both, we've created and curated the best digital tools out there um, and married those to in-person supports for both job seekers and, and um, employers in order to solve this um, skills challenge that we're having and really to create a common language in the marketplace around skills. Uh, the Markle Foundation started Skillful, which is a partnership with LinkedIn and Arizona State University at the national level, and then with a whole bunch of Colorado partners at the state level, starting with um, the governor and working with uh, state, county, and city organizations, as well as nonprofits and educators across the state. And we have tools to support what we're looking at as the um, ecosystem of the skills-based labor market. And that ecosystem we view as a triangle, which has employers, job seekers, and educators at each one of the points of that triangle. The tools that we have for job seekers are, um, there are many, and they're out on skillful.com. The first one is a hot jobs tool. So we're looking at all the data out there of occupations and employment in the state of Colorado, looking at what types of jobs are popping and growing and putting them out there on the hot jobs tool. We're also um, leveraging LinkedIn for job search functionality. So when you find a hot job you're inter interested in, you can go out to LinkedIn and actually find jobs that are available in that area. LinkedIn has created a tool called Training Finder which is only available in Colorado in Phoenix. And that tool outlines all of the training courses that are available for people that are interested in upskilling themselves. And the critical component in order to be included on the training finder is um, employment outcomes and transparency. So educators are unable to be a part of that tool if they're not providing the cost information as well as what the employment outcomes are for the um, programs that they're putting forth. Um, and then finally, we are linked out to edX, which has a number of free online courses that um, individuals can find to help support them in their career search. 
So like I mentioned, we're actually trying to couple this with in-person supports. So we have both events as well as coaches. The career coaches, like I mentioned with Joe, um, are out um, doing virtual or in-person coaching with people to help them create their resumes, make them skills-based resumes, and really create an, own, an action plan so that individuals can own their own pathway to success. Um, and then we're also doing a number of events where we are putting employers and job seekers in a room so that they can um, learn from one another. Job seekers can learn about the opportunities available. Employers have access to more um, and different types of candidates. And it's a real live networking opportunity for job seekers because we know that networking is such a critical component of finding a new job. On the educator side, we are trying to inform program development as well as employment outcomes. So this is where the relationship with LinkedIn is really important because LinkedIn has so much data about alumni and about people that they can provide customized dashboards to educators to show where alumni are going over time, how their alumni compare to other schools that are either have programs in their area or geographically in their area. Um, and they're really able to look at the skills that are acquired by people in those programs as well. And then finally, on the employer side, we are again trying to couple technology and data with in-person support. So we started our path for employers with a data-driven approach and looked at um, ONET data as well as Burning Glass. So this is, ONET is a federal database of jobs um, information. Burning Glass looks at all the job, job postings that are out on all the major um, job sites. And we took that data to start with 20 occupations across two different industries, IT and advanced manufacturing, to really understand what the data was telling us for what skills and competencies are required to be successful in these 20 different occupations. Uh, we took that and then went to employers and held roundtables to say, is this data right? And does it actually um, jive with, with what you're seeing in your workplace? And we updated um, that data set to be a real life um, deep dive guide for these occupations for employers to use to understand what's required for employees to be successful in these particular occupations. So again, we started in IT and advanced manufacturing and have plans to go to additional industries, healthcare, and kind of cross-functional areas as well, um, starting with business operations. Um, Jobs with employers, they can, we have job posting templates, so they can actually just take the templates and post it online using the skills-based um, uh, descriptions. And we have also found that as we've worked with employers, they have said time and time again, we hire based on hard skills and we fire based on soft skills. So we did a deep focus on not, not only the technical skills required for a particular occupation, but also the foundational skills and the soft skills as well. Um, the reasons that employers are very interested in this, um, there are a few different reasons, but the first one is that it actually opens up access to talent. So if they're able to look at skills rather than degrees or other proxies, it allows them to really open their talent pool um, and they have a lot more people to choose from in terms of filling jobs and it also helps them to fill jobs a lot faster. Um, the second reason it's really important is that it requires an employer to actually think about what it takes to be successful in a particular occupation. And if they start from that point, it is very transparent to both them as well as the person that they are hiring um, to know what it takes to be successful in that particular occupation. And they found that to be a um, very powerful tool for them. The third reason for employers is really because the skills gap is a national conversation, and this is a way for them to start addressing it in their own communities with their own businesses and kind of lead the way in this critical conversation that we're having right now. Um, so I'm actually going to uh, close with a story about an employer. And um, as we've been out look, working with employers across the state of Colorado, there is an employer in northern Colorado that builds, that manufactures a very precise lens, um, and that it's a glass lens for rifles. 
And historically, they have only hired individuals that know how to manufacture this piece of glass. And it's a very specific skill set. And this was not due to skillful, but um, on a whim, they hired for this particular role a sushi chef. And that sushi chef is one of their best people in that role. And it's because the skill that is required for sushi is an incredibly detail-oriented and precise skill. The same is required in creating these very specific and precise lenses. And they are now true believers in the fact that it is the skill and the competency that is required, not necessarily the experience or even the specific industry, but that skill is what they need. And they're changing the way they hire across the board um, due to the due to that sushi, sushi chef. So um, that is Skillful in a nutshell. You can visit skillful.com and look at all of those resources, both from a job seeker perspective as well as an employer perspective. Can I ask a few questions? Of course. I know. It's like a couple, a couple of y'all's questions. Sorry, I'm on red. Uh, it's, it's super interesting to me to think about like using the LinkedIn data as a programmer, yep. right, and all the ways you can approach that data and say, like, all right, this company is doing uh, hiring people for this job. What previous jobs do we see them having? What trends like might help them figure out what skills go into this job? Because yep. I think part of the problem with credentials and degrees and so forth is we use them as a proxy for not knowing what the skills Absolutely. are. Absolutely. Right. Like what? Um, as you start to work with employers, like what kind of pushback? Do you get from them or like are they just kind of like yeah we want to hire on skills like really good ones you know, <laughs> like. so I think um, the pushback we get from employers is not necessarily around skills specifically they intuitively they get it and they understand it the pushback is more I don't know how and I don't have time and so we are trying to figure out how do we create tools that are really easy for them to use, especially for the small and medium-sized businesses who they don't have the resources to dedicate against skills-based hiring to really learn it. And again, that's why we put the uh, in-person resources as well. But it is, it is well-received, and that time component is really the hardest part. With the... Um with the companies, like, do you find that, obviously it's like pretty new initiative, so there yeah. hasn't been a ton of results so far. Um, what do they see as like the risks and rewards to it? You know, are they, are you trying to make a pitch to them of like, this is a good thing to do and it's like important for society, or are you trying to make like a business case for them or it's a little bit of both? We're absolutely trying to make a business case and that business case is find people with the right skills. Um, fast and cheap, and also find people that can grow with your organization. So that's the value prop for the employer, is they get people that actually know how to do the job, regardless of the proxy. Um, and hopefully, they can do it a lot faster. Um, it, it comes with the added benefit of solving a large economic challenge, but it is absolutely, it has to hit their bottom line in order for them to be able to buy into it. One of the things that you mentioned, this will be my last question, I'll take your questions. Uh, one of the things you mentioned that, that is like close to my heart is kind of the uh, transparency, outcomes reporting, et cetera, on the, on the training side. Uh, do you find that the training providers of, of different industries, whether like mechanical things or, or, or kind of office skills or whatever, it, are they like, oh yeah, here's the data? Or are they like, whoa, why would we tell you these things? Or like, P.S. We don't have any idea what they are. Like, what kind of feedback do you get on that conversation? I would say it's totally a mix <laughs> from there, we're, not, we're not going to provide it, and those are the folks that are on training finder, to, uh, I mean, it really spreads the gamut of what you just mentioned to those that are really interested. And probably those that are the most interested are those that want to see what everyone else is doing so that they can pr improve their own outcomes. Um, but it is absolutely across the board. And, you know, the other thing I would say is, uh, educators, specifically higher education, are, pre are a very difficult um, organization to work with, and it's a pretty difficult challenge to undertake. If I'm a software developer and I'm like, yes, getting helping people like access 
medium and high skilled jobs and like building great careers, I want to get involved in like helping do that. Call me. What do I do? <laughs> Call Andy. What's your phone number? <laughs> uh, um, seriously, come talk to me. We have uh, we have a lot of. We're actually thinking about redesigning our platform and redesigning our tools um, and going through a design process. So um, go to skillful.com or find me afterwards, and we can chat. And yeah, although it's a new initiative, the part that I think is so amazing about is like LinkedIn has this, is a yeah. big part of the project and has just this unmatched data set and data access that you can do some like really powerful, awesome things with. Yes. And also have a great software team. And that was part of the vision. I think when Markle started Skillful, they would not have done it without a partner like LinkedIn because LinkedIn does have the data and the scale to get it out to a lot of people. Cool. Two questions from y'all. Questions, questions, questions. Back corner on the left there. So yeah, uh, how does that translate for like military coming out of the military sector trying to translate into the private or even public sector? Do you have anything? Um, so we do not have anything specific to veterans, although the um, concept I think is very fitting for veterans of how do you take the skills that you've acquired while in active duty and translate them to um, more of a desk job or other jobs that are out there. So we have not specifically focused on veterans um, except to say that, that the tools are absolutely um, useful as well. I was talking to um, a, a, a training provider. They train people to repair cell phone towers. And uh, he was saying that some of their most targeted uh, user or like a student acquisition is with folks who have like paratrooper training are not afraid of like climbing some <laughs> cell phone towers, you know? And I think there's like these not things that you wouldn't necessarily see as like A to B connections, but then once you start looking at like, like fundamental skills in there, and that's really the hard, interesting part of the question is that things start like stitching together in, yeah. in meaningful ways. One more. Do, do, do. All right, that's it. Thank Thanks, you. Andy. Three, two, one.